Bills began to sign players. Richie Lucas, All-America from Penn State. Tennessee captain Joe Schaefer. Then Tommy O'Connell came into the fold, and over 80 additional contracts were to be received as time went on. Then there was the matter of equipment. Before long, Buster was up to his neck in pants, pads, jerseys, tape, socks, shoes, liniment, and a thousand and one other supplies without which neither he nor equipment manager Ed Dingman could hope to operate. As we progressed, I thought I'd go out and take a look at the stadium. This was my first look. I almost collapsed. I was sure we'd never play in 1960. But thanks to the wonderful efforts of so many people, everything was ready in time. Things were very hectic for the coaches getting started. And there were tickets to be sold. You do what you have to, though. But when training camp was ready to open, we were ready to go. On July 11th, the Bills established headquarters for training at East Aurora's Roycroft Inn. Seymour Knox Polo Field became the Bills' practice ground. Practice, practice, and more practice. And plenty of meetings, too. All designed to separate 35 men from the original 80 boys. July the 29th, the city laid out the welcome mat for the squad with a big parade. Over 100,000 people lined Main Street to welcome the Bills back home and to wish them well for the following evening's preseason opener with the Boston Patriots.